Hi folks, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Today, Brad, we're gonna talk about 13 things you should know about a wheelchair. And you say, why would why should I know anything about a wheelchair? And why 13? Well, I don't know, 13 is my lucky number. But beyond <laughs> that, Brad, um, if you have to push somebody in a wheelchair, let's say it's your grandpa or grandma, or maybe your mom or dad, um, these are things you should know. And I didn't think this was a big deal until I'll, I was just um, saw this the other day someone was pushing somebody in a wheelchair and they were going off a curb and they were going head first. I mean, that lady was gonna go tumbling down the road. <laughs> I went running over there and said, hey, you back off the curb instead of going forward. Sure, so, a lot of these little things that can cause big problems. Big problems and uh, we thought everybody knew, but they don't. So that's the things we're gonna talk about today, Brad. So, by the way, Brad, we have a couple people that just wandered in. Wow, so, three of them. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're going to provide you videos on it. Uh, we provide you videos. You want to subscribe to us because we provide you videos on stay healthy, fit, pain free, and we upload it every day. And please like us on Facebook. Brad's got a complex that he really is afraid that nobody likes him. Yeah, so. I'm working on that too. Right? Yeah. My, my therapist is helping me out too. All right, so let's talk about the first thing, Brad. The first thing is if you are going to go off a ramp or down a ramp or off a curb, you really want to make sure that you back down. So, um, in, you know, right now, Brad, let's, let's, let's go this way once here. Sure. I'm I think the brakes, the brakes are on. Yeah. So we're going to turn this way. So as, as I'm going down a curb or a ramp, this is what can happen. You're going to help me, Brad? Yep. It's very... <laughs> yeah. Boom. Here, yeah. let's, let's do it from a profile. Let's do it. Yeah. You'll see, start leaning forward, because people will start to do that. They see something and... and well, off a curb, you're going to be leaning forward. Right. I mean, so, but ready? It, it, it just, and I'm not yeah. doing much at all. It, it's, it's ready to... And I'll be falling and I won't be able to get up. So. Right. Yeah, and typically your head hits first. Yeah, so make um, sure that you just back off the curb. And the, and the way the tires are made, you can kind of hold, lift up the chair a little bit. Yep. You, you can go back here and you can you know, get the weight on the back side. And we don't have a curb here, but believe me, uh, you work it in a lot of times if you have a second person just to help the person if you haven't done it before uh, to able body people are the best why don't we show a lot of people don't even know for g going up a bump rad um, right now let's head for this bump and don't don't do what you're supposed to do uh, and a bump oftentimes is a threshold going through a doorway and it doesn't take much and, and, so. yeah if you got a little threshold it's like <laughs> you know, the same thing on. yeah same thing right it, it so, just doesn't go you can either go through it backwards and, you and know, watch the difference. Up, goes yep, right big over difference. it, yep. Um, there are occasions where <laughs> you can't get around to go backwards. So usually there's these little bars back here, here and here. And I don't know if they're made for this, but if you put your foot on there and push down. It gives you a bit of a lever. Yeah. So I'm going to go up until the wheels touch. I want to put my foot there and gently do a little bit of a wheelie. You know, you're not going to pull them all the way back and scare the, you know, scare Grandma half to death. Oh. <laughs> but we are going to just enough to wait, get the wheels off, and the back ones will go over real easy then. And so, a little bump like this, you can go forward. Sure. And, you know, yep. Exactly. Uh, and you, you know, you use some judgment. Uh, little. You have to do it a couple times. You know exactly what we're talking about. All right, Brad. The other thing that a lot of people have trouble with is putting leg rests on and taking them oh. off. <laughs> so, and they're, they're pretty universal in that way that if, I don't know, Lonnie, can you get this or not? how close are we here? Right, right in this area here, if you could look. So with, with most of them, Brad, have you found this to be the case? They usually have the little release button right here. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, and they're kind of tucked in there sometimes. Right. This one sticks out a little bit, but yeah, sometimes... Sometimes people have trouble finding them, but it's usually right in here. If you push this, it, it, just see how easily the, the leg rest swings out? Mm -hmm. Now, there's some that just pull off. That's right. really really old ones that yeah, do it that way. They kind of go vertical and yeah. it's a lock system. But these, they, they usually go out like this, and to take them off, you have to move it all the way out to the side. Right. Like this, and then they come off. You got to lift straight up. And you got to do it gently. Th these are the things, if you force them, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> you now, have to take your time. If you with try it. to put this back on like this, it's just not going to work. You yeah. have to go out, approach it from the side. And you have to hook up the little knobbies here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 
Line up the, the, the two alignment uh, holes and... Yeah, and then you can push it and then look how easily it just goes right back yeah. in place. These two points here, the pivot points, yeah. So take your time with it, look at it. If you get upset with it and you're trying to do it, one thing, they are finger pinchers. You get your fingers pinched in there and it might make you say bad things, so we don't want that. That's right, and this is a family show. Right, exactly. So let's go, let's move these out of the way because when you're going to take and put this, this into a vehicle, the first thing you want to do if you're going to put this into a car or a truck or mm -hmm. whatever, you want to take the leg rest off. Right. Makes it much easier. Yes, it's much less ha to handle. Especially yes, uh, <laughs> if you start to take, move it around and one of those is not hooked and they start swinging around and that's a real problem. So the next part, in order to fold it up, most chairs are very simple. Brad, you just grab the middle like this or like this and you just pull up like this. Yep, they come right together. And, and the reverse is also true. To, to open it back up again, all you do is usually push on the side here, the side frame, and she goes right down. Yep. I'm glad it went right down because otherwise <laughs> I'd have been embarrassed. So we go up like this. Now, usually to put it in a vehicle, um, there's two ways you can do it. Like if you put it in the back seat, sometimes you can do this, Brad. You can actually keep it unlocked. Yeah. And you can roll right up to the back uh, uh, seat of the car. You put this side into the car. Yeah. The, the wheels you're going to hook up over to the top of where you put your yeah. feet. And then you lift up and it goes right inside. Uh, we actually did a video yeah. on that. And uh, it really is a lot easier than lifting it and hurting your back. Right. And if you have to lift it, which a lot of times people do to put it in the trunk, right. you're going to want to make sure you lock the brakes. Yeah, exactly. Because if you don't, this is what happens. Yeah. The, the, the wheel just spins on you. So you're going to go ahead and lock the brakes on both sides. And now you can get a little bit of a lever arm here like this, and you can lift it up like this right. and into the car. Yep, exactly. Find a, find a strong young person to do that if, yeah. they, if they're available. You know, if you happen to have a, a bad back or you're, you know, not the real strong, vibrant person that you once were. Another thing I was going to point out, if, if, you, if your loved one is in a chair a lot, uh, what happens after a while is this chair, the, the seat gets, to, gets stretched out and it creates like a hammock. Right. So the, the sling here becomes slung. <laughs> yeah. And what happens with that is when a person's sitting on that and it's slung down, they're going to sit crooked and they're going to put more pressure on one side than the other or it's going to put pressure on the side bones here and it's, it's going to cause possibly pressure sores. So a lot of times, that's why you might see sometimes where you put an actual board in here and then a cushion on top of the board. Right. Or sometimes they have like really dense foam right. that helps keep it from sinking in. And sometimes you can get them that are shaped, they call it like an anti-sling. It's a special cushion. Uh, we don't have one here, but it, it eliminates that sling in it. It keeps it more flat. Um, this is actually a pretty tight sling on this Yeah, this chair. actually is. This one's holding up really well right now. I, I wouldn't make any changes Th to this that. This is not a cheap wheelchair. If you just get the standard one, you'll see the sling will. And just over time, if you get an older chair that, yeah, that's exactly. been around for a long time. Yeah. I was going to point out just one thing about cushions, Brad. You yeah. know, people, I think, like, th this is a real thick cushion. They think, oh, this will be good for the people. Sure. Uh, what they don't realize is it's all about, you know, usually what we like to have is like a dense half of the cushion and then a softer foam on top. So it's a dual yeah. density. Yeah, so you don't bottom out because what happens, especially if you have kind of a bony butt, you have these little sit bones, this is the spine, and this is the part that you sit on, those bones can sink right down into the cushion all the way to the bottom, so you're actually getting pressure on just like you're sitting on a board. Right. So you, you, you need a cushion, like I said, normally it, half and half. half. The bottom half is kind of a dense foam, the top half is a less, less dense foam. Right. You can feel it on yourself if you're if you're bottoming out on a yeah, cushion. Yeah, that's a good way to test to see you know to make sure you're. you're yeah, I, I what I do is I, I sit down on a cushion like this, and I, I actually I can feel my butt bone here. Yep. And I feel it if it, it sinks all the way to the bottom at all. Right. And you you got to give it a few minutes. Sometimes. Yeah, because I'm I'm actually sinking down as we speak here, and I'm sure. a, I'm I'm all the way bottomed out now. I can feel it. Yep. So. Yep. So it's a little deep can be deceiving. Yeah. Let's talk about the width of the chair. Boy, this thing really. Flattens out, doesn't it? Oh yeah, Bob, you got a big, big butt. butt. I got a big butt. I cannot lie. Okay, so let's talk about the width of the chair, Brad. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of tough because you think, okay, I'm gonna make it sure it's wide enough so the person has plenty of room. Well, if it's too wide, then it's hard to propel the chair by yourself. Exactly. 
So look at, you know, my, if I'm way out here, it's going to be hard to push the chair. And it's much harder to get around corners or through doorways. Yeah, and a lot of the older homes, oh, yeah. you, you may not even be able to get through um, parts of the home. Right. I, we see this all the time. So When you're trying to squeeze through a tight doorway and your hands are here, it's a good way to skin your knuckles and, you know, to get them to cut and bleed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So ge generally, you want to have it as narrow as you can. You want to be able to hopefully slip a hand in there at right. least. But it does, you don't need much more than that, though. Right. I mean, it, it's, it's fine if, if, if you, you know, it, it's a little bit snug right. on that regard. I'm going to point out something as far as propelling your chair, um, and that's, you know, when some people are pushing their chair, make sure they're on the rim here and not on the wheel, because if they go down right here, mm. they're going to hit the brake, and they're going to cut their, their thumb. thumb. Yep, it, uh, and it's a nasty one. And I have done that many times, and you wonder why? Because I used to play wheelchair basketball, and oh. when you're in, in the throes of the game, you grab onto the tire quite often, and you, and you go right down. So that was considered a badge of honor when we had our, oh, really? our cuts. Yeah. It took more than one time to figure that out? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, when you're going real fast, right. sometimes you're, you're just, thinking about the game. Yeah, not, you're not, not thinking to, about it. Right. right. So. Your hand or your thumb is something that can, you, you got to win the game. All right, height of the footrest, um, just real simple, too, a real point to be made is that when um, you want to make sure now let's look, look at this look how high my knee is here right his knee is higher way higher than right. my hip if we put a, a line or drain of his hip and his knee it's point is it, it's level and it should be level with the floor and as that's going to round yeah up. it's going to round out my back it's going to put more pressure on my butt so I again more likely to have skin breakdown so you, you want to make sure that it's down usually the, the knee this chair is almost too short for me at all. I mean, I can actually, that's about right where it should be, right there. Right. On the floor. Exactly. And if you are a person that, if they go around like this, that's about where you want it. Yep, exactly. You know I mean? If they don't use don't the leg rest. Have, yeah. It was if the chair is too tall and their legs are dangling. Right, because you'll get pressure underneath the thigh. And it cuts yeah. circulation off to the feet. And a lot of times they already have compromised circulation. You don't want to compound it. So. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, people that sit a lot, you have to realize they should try to take pressure off their bottom every 20 minutes or a half hour sure. or so. Yeah. And a lot of times that might be just a, a quick stand if they can do, or if they can lean forward even a little bit, or even side to side, right. doing something to take some of the pressure off their bottom. Exactly. So, There's a lot to wheelchairs, Bob. Yeah, th there is. There is. Uh, let's mention just the last one, Brad. Um, with brakes, there are extenders you can get. You just take the, the rubber off here and you put it on there, and, and it makes so much easier to put the brakes on. Right, and they're, they're not very expensive, and, you know, I, I don't know why they just don't ma make them when you buy a, a standard Make a option. standard, yeah. Um, these little black things, this one won't come off, but it will. You just have to work with it. You may have to have some with some tools or a good, strong grip, but that will come off, and they slide right on. Sometimes you have to fight with them a little bit, too, but Someone once that's on, strong like bull? Yeah, strong right. like a bull. <laughs> All right. Wow. Thanks, everybody, for watching. All right. Take care of your wheelchair and your loved ones.